Hello dear LCVPTMs, so in this part we will check uh, how we need uh, to report and collect data for uh, talent management and uh, what exactly we need to report as TM in order to support better the people decisions inside the organization. So, uh, a small introduction first, so in this, uh, in this guidebook uh, we will see uh, which are the main data that we need to collect for our LC and uh, how we can work on them and how we can combine them in order to ensure that we have the right information uh, about uh, the people, current state, every time in order to come up with a final action plan that will help the operations and our people grow even more inside our LC. So, Going uh, step by step, uh, based on uh, a profession, a professor of organizational change, Russell Arkov, uh, we saw that uh, there are uh, five different categories about uh, how a human mind is thinking and how he is working. Starting with category number one is about data, which are symbols, which are inputs that uh, we are having in, uh, in our mind. But uh, at the same time, they are not so useful by themselves. And uh, that's why we're approaching to the second step, which is information. And uh, here, what we have done is that uh, data are, uh, uh, have been used in a wise way in order to be uh, combined and correlate to see uh, what kind of uh, information we can get from those uh, data, those inputs that we have received. And uh, this information, they are usually answering questions like who, what, where, and when. And uh, based on all these things, uh, we are passing to the knowledge or else action plan, which is actually the practical uh, usage of these information. And uh, that's why they are answering questions about how we need to do something and uh, how uh, we need to follow and create an action plan that will be efficient about uh, our operations. Uh, between all of them, uh, understanding uh, it's uh, the fourth step, the fourth category, and uh, it has to do with uh, uh, why everything is happening and actually uh, the understanding of the logic behind of everything that we are doing and every data and information that exists there. And finally, the final step, it is uh, wisdom that uh, is helping us to evaluate what is uh, happening, to evaluate this why behind everything that is happening in the organization. So, moving on step by step, uh, first we have data, which is actually something uh, uh, empty. It's uh, just an input that uh, by itself it doesn't have uh, a huge meaning uh, or not meaning at all because it doesn't give us uh, actually something uh, really important about uh, uh, why or how or what exactly is happening in the organization. So it, it's kind of useless uh, when you're having it by itself as it is. Uh, by having uh, more data that uh, actually are correlated between each other and uh, you can categorize them in a proper way, you can proceed to the next step which is information uh, in order to start understanding the bigger picture. As, and uh, by having this information, you're starting giving meaning to the, this data that you have collected. So uh, in uh, groups of data, if we could say that, uh, this information can help you understand how you need to act from now on uh, in order to ensure that uh, you are tackling different issues inside the organization or you are taking the right people decision. But sometimes even this information because of lack of uh, data collection might not be enough and uh, you need to collect even more in order to have the right decisions at the end of the day. And uh, passing to the how, think uh, about knowledge and action plan. So after you have collect all the right information that you need, you are in the process that uh, you are trying to use this information in order to understand like what are the actions that you need to take in order to have uh, a concrete and efficient plan uh, for solving the issues or progressing the current state of uh, the organi organization. However, this knowledge, because uh, again of uh, lack of uh, uh, information, sometimes it might not be uh, enough 
and especially not knowing why this is happening, it may keep us back of uh, understanding better and better the organization and ensuring that we have the best action plan. And that's why we are passing to the understanding phase, uh, which is by itself, it's a more analytical process that is helping us understand uh, why this uh, action plan needs to be there, why this uh, information is relevant for my action plan, why this data can help me build the, the right action plan at the end of the day. And uh, uh, in uh, opposite side from uh, a knowledge and action plan, uh, understanding it's the process that it helps us uh, uh, create uh, more and more knowledge by itself, sometimes even without need to have uh, extra information or extra data. And uh, we will see that understanding it's mostly a supporting phase for all the other processes rather than a phase by itself. And here we are passing to the wisdom thing, uh, to the final uh, category that uh, it actually helps us uh, judge and evaluate all the process and what is happening. It is uh, the, the level, the category that uh, helps us understand and helps us uh, judge if something is wrong or right, if something is good or bad. And by the diagram that you can find uh, on your right, you will see that uh, uh, starting from data and based on uh, understanding and the way that we connect its process with each other, its data or the information to have a proper knowledge and uh, outcome, uh, you will see that uh, for every process, in order to go from one category to another, uh, we need to deeply understand the relations between the data, the relations between the information and the relation of different knowledge that we are getting from every uh from every action plan that uh, we are creating. So here it is uh, more clear that understanding is not a separate level of its own, but it's actually what supports the transition from each stage to the next one. And going in a more visualized state, we will see that understanding, uh, it, uh, it is there in every transitioning uh, phase from data to information, from information to knowledge and action plan, and from action plan uh, again to collect data in order to produce more information, in order to produce better action plan and start using this understanding behind uh, everything that we are doing in order to have more and more knowledge. And all this thing at the end of the day, at the end of our experiences, will uh, lead us to the wisdom part that we actually are able for some things to evaluate if they are good or not for the organization. Going to a more ISEC related example and uh, how this model can apply to ISEC, uh, if we say that, uh, for example, the data that we're having right now is that uh, we have a high retention rate and a high attendance to the last national conference. Like uh, by themselves, like uh, this data cannot give us something. So, for example, if I just know that I have high retention rate, okay, it is something that it exists, like it's a fact, it happened. Uh, but uh, in a correlation with uh, the high attendance rate of the conference, I can understand that these things uh, are somehow related to each other. And here is where, I getting, where I'm getting the information, because the members that participate in the national conference, uh, they feel more connected with the organization now, and that's why they want to stay more, and that's why I have high retention rate. So starting from the high attendance on the conference, I was able to see that those people that they stayed in the organization are the people that they want to continue. And here it comes to the knowledge and the action plan part. Because uh, having this information, uh, I'm getting the, the knowledge that uh, people that uh, they are in the, in the conferences, because they are attending motivational sessions and they are connecting with more people of other LCs, uh, they are feeling at the end of the day more connected with Isaac and that's why they need to continue. So my action plan will be uh, something connected to the next national conference in order for me to ensure that these people will, uh, uh, that I have right now, they will uh, join in the next national conference so I will keep high, have high retention rate. Going to the understanding of why, uh, and here it comes the, the main uh, picture, is like 
uh, why these people they attended at the first point in the national conference, uh, why the national conference was so attractive to it to them, why after the national conference uh, they wanted to stay, and uh, this why can be replied based on how. Uh, we have uh, managed the whole process behind it, which is even more data that we need. So, for example, why I have so high re uh, attendance rate in national conference? Uh, probably the right data that I will need to have there is that uh, I had the really engaged uh, ICOM plan that helped me have high attendance rate. Or when I'm getting to the information part, like... Uh, uh, why the people are connected and they want to stay more uh, after the national conference experience is uh, what I said before that because they're attending there we know that uh, from the agenda which is another input another data from the agenda of the national conference people they attended a lot of motivational and uh, group activities that uh, they help them to decide if they want to stay or not because they're connected more with the organization. These whys and their answers can help us to understand better that uh, what is happening behind the data, the background, and for us to get more and more knowledge in order to have a more concrete action plan at the end of the day. Because before we just said that I need to ensure that my people will stay and they will go to the next national conference in order to have again higher retention rate. But right now, by understanding why I had a high attendance at the very first point, uh, I know that I need again uh, a strong ICOM uh, plan that will help me have a, a high attendance at the end of the day. And going uh, with this mindset, it will help us understand more and more deep why things are happening with the way that they are happening and uh, to produce a better and a more concrete action plan at the end of the day. And finally, the part of wisdom is the process that uh, it helps us understand, like, uh, the whole process behind all these things. So from the moment that uh, uh, people are feeling connected till the moment that they are staying in NYSEC, it passed all the processes that we followed about participating in uh, national, conferences, uh, nation national conferences and uh, attending to the motivational sessions and interacting with other people from other LCs. So in that way, people are feeling more connected and that's why they want to stay. So by having these touch points, uh, we will ensure that these people will want to stay. So this is uh, right or good for people uh, to attend national conference. So in this process, I can judge, I can evaluate that attending on national conferences, it's uh, the right thing to do and a good thing, uh, a good strategy, let's say, to follow for uh, my ELC in order to ensure high retention rate. So, uh, in order to sum up and pass more in the, in the ISEC uh, related uh, to data thing, um, like the whole, the whole process of keeping people data, uh, it's something new in ISEC and it wasn't always there. So, uh, that might be a probability why you don't have enough people data from previous years. Uh, but if you have, good for you, you can use them, you can capitalize them. What we need is to ensure that uh, it won't stay like this and we will start uh, even from now to keep data for the next generations. Because only then, uh, as a core value that we have in the organization, only then TM can say that we are acting sustainably towards uh, the people data uh, that uh, we are collecting. And don't forget that... Uh, uh, MC and LC people are staying in NYSEC for uh, just one year uh, and uh, like they need to ensure that they are keeping this data for next uh, generations in order to work properly on their people decision and their own action plan. Let's see now uh, why it is important for operations. Uh, three main uh, points here. Uh, first one, like uh, we need to ensure that uh, uh, we are making uh, informed decisions and uh, proper decisions based on uh, actual data that we are collecting. Because uh, TM is always uh, have to do with uh, TM processes and uh, their uh, action plan. 
but we need also to understand uh, what is the priorities for every phase that we're running inside TM process and uh, how we, are, we can run it in a better way in order to have a better uh, outcome by setting a proper action plan for each TM process, for example, uh, based on the data that we have already collected. Uh, then we have reporting to different stakeholders, having in mind our co-LCVPs from different operations, our LCP as well, the team leaders of the LC, the MC, etc. So, uh, when it comes to people, uh, TM cannot always be the one that is taking the final decisions, so somehow uh, the rest of the departments, for example, or the team leaders as well, they need uh, to, involve in, to be involved in this kind of decisions. Why? Because TM, maybe he's finally responsible for everything regarding people and the HR inside the LC, but at the same time, he is not the one that he is managing the members uh, in a daily basis. So, at the end of the day, we cannot say that everything that is happening in the LC is because of TM. So, that's why uh, the rest of the people needs to uh, have equal uh, en engagement and equal... Uh, uh, management towards what is happening and how we are taking decisions about our people. So in that case, uh, since TM is the final responsible and at this point he is the master on how to understand and how to translate this data, he need to ensure that uh, he will make the rest of the stakeholders uh, understand what exactly is happening and what the data that uh, we are having mean for our operations, for our organization. So. Uh, he needs through synergies and through meetings to translate this data to the people in order to take a more collective uh, um, decision about uh, how the people needs to be managed uh, in order to improve uh, its department's processes and uh, achieve our strategies. Last but not least, uh, what we mentioned before is that the only one term information is not enough. So we need to ensure that uh, we are storing all this data, this uh, input that we had from uh, our work in order for next generations to have more wiser people decisions. And uh, uh, what exactly uh, reporting is and why reporting is important for operations. Uh, as we said, by doing the reporting, uh, we ensure the availability and co collection of uh, all this data that we need in order to make uh, data-driven decisions inside the organization. And uh, at the same time, uh, like we have specific templates that we are using for uh, making the reporting, which is HR control, engagement survey, and so on as minimums to ensure proper data collection. And then uh, we need to ensure that we are building a routine on how we are reporting monthly, quarterly, and uh, based on different engagement reports uh, towards MC and the different stakeholders. And have in mind that uh, uh, usually uh, this, some reports need to happen even in the local plenary for all the people of the LC to be aware on uh, what is happening regarding HR. And it will also boost the understanding of the people on how TM works and what TM is as a department. So, we know already that the report itself is a TM, uh, it's a, the fourth TM process, a part of them, and uh, it has uh, four specific categories. HR control, which is actually the main uh, tool that uh, TM people are using in order to ensure uh, all the data uh, collection and the, all the data alignment and the understanding of what is happening there to have proper information. Uh, usually this tool and all the tools about uh, reporting are provided by EMC, so in case that you don't have yet uh, your tools for reporting, make sure that you will approach your MCVP TM in order to have these tools on place for your LC. So, state of the entity, uh, it is uh, again uh, the routine that we said before about how we are reporting and what we are measuring as performance for uh, reporting as TM people and uh, also how we are making sure that uh, even uh, soon that we need to fill uh, quarterly but every reporting tool that we are using it is accessible 
to everyone in the local and the national plenary in order to have credibility and uh, uh, to ensure that uh, all the people are aware of what is happening from the M and HR perspective. Uh, third part is engagement assessment. So it is a working nationally and national engagement survey. Uh, and uh, what is our role here is to ensure that we will have enough responses, uh, at least 60% of response rate of uh, our LC. Why? Because like uh, we need to ensure that uh, we are having enough responses to have enough data and come up with uh, the right information and action plan based on the needs of uh, each LC. Uh, otherwise, you can understand that if the response rate is really low, whatever this response rate will tell us, it won't be uh, enough to have the, an efficient action plan at the end of the day. And uh, last part, but not least, it's knowledge management, uh, which is uh, ensuring that uh, we are uh, submitting a TM process uh, survey uh, about uh, uh, how the TM process in its LC is going, which is uh, our current state and how we need to proceed. Uh, but at the same time, it is uh, how we are ensuring, again, the accessibility of the network in our reports and uh, the storage of these reports for the next generations, for minimum five years. Then, uh, going point by point, the reporting uh, things that we said before, the main uh, three key tools that we're using is engagement survey template, uh, SONA and HR control in order to ensure that we collect and store all the HR data. But still, uh, as, I as we mentioned before, these are the minimum things that uh, we need to use in order to ensure uh, appropriate uh, data collection. Uh, but still, there are other several ways that we can uh, get even more data. And uh, this is up to you as LCVPCTM how you want to ensure to use other platforms as a plus and not as a replacement in order to collect even more data and have uh, even better insights of what is happening. Then, uh, I'm going to see the reporting checklist uh, that you need to have as LCVPTM. So, uh, what uh, you need to have in mind is that the TM process, also something new that is happening in ISEC the last years, uh, it was and it is uh, our main responsibility and our main KPIs for uh, how we are ensuring that TM as a department is successful. Uh, but uh, what wasn't clear for us uh, and uh, what was missing is that uh, is the quality of the delivering of these processes. So uh, maybe you will know from uh, MC reports and, and uh, your your predecessor reports that sometimes. Uh, maybe the uh, get process implementation, the team process implementation were really high, but uh, it wasn't uh, a reflecting to the numbers of the people in the LC. So, for example, you might have the really high team process implementation, but at the same time, uh, your people didn't stay in the organization and uh, they didn't have. Uh, uh, plan achievement or they didn't bring any goals or they didn't have education. So that's why uh, from uh, this year we came up with a specific list that uh, we need uh, to track the main KPIs to ensure uh, not only delivering of team process but at the same time quality of, uh, of the team process that we're delivering. So going for that, uh, regarding get process, we need to ensure new members retention rate uh, counting members that they are less than six months in the organization. Uh, and uh, the question itself, it's uh, new members uh, that you have at the end of the month divided by new members that you had at the beginning of the month in order to find the exact percentage. Uh, then uh, we need to track uh, sign-ups for membership from uh, the last uh, attraction period of recruitment and uh, uh, following up of it, department uh, of uh, with uh, full HR. Uh, with uh, the question of uh, current department in HR uh, divided by ideal department in HR based on talent planning. So in talent planning, we have set the right amount of people that we need to have in each department in order to ensure that uh, the department can work properly and the functional and the operational strategies are achieved. So we need to see if currently we're having 
uh, the number of uh, people that we said at the beginning that we need. Then tracking separately new members uh, NPS, again for members that they are less than six months in the organization. This is something that is happening from engagement survey. So uh, this is the first thing that you need to have in mind why we need to ensure high uh, amount of responses in the national engagement survey. And last but not least, and maybe even more important regarding uh, get process KPIs, it's a percentage of uh, members with full onboarding. Uh, for all members here, because no matter if the member are new or uh, retained in the organization, we need to ensure that they are on board properly in the next uh, uh, for, for the next peak to be successful. Because maybe they have different roles, or the strategies may be totally different, or uh, new knowledge is coming all the time in the organization. So all the members need to be equal on boarding from this process. Second uh, process, it's uh, develop. Uh, here, main MOS and uh, most important to ensure the success of everything, it's members achieving their goal. This is happening uh, mostly from engagement survey, but at the same time, through calibration meetings with uh, the team leaders, uh, we can ensure, first of all, if our members are having goals uh, and uh, if they've been tracked monthly or even weekly sometimes. And this is something that uh, it's ha it happens uh, through PDP implementation. Um, so we need to ensure that every person is having its own numerical goals in order for them also to know how to contribute in the LC. Second is a percentage of uh, team leaders capacity building. It's a part of your educational plan for the LC and uh, based on the topics and the processes that we are following there to ensure that uh, a high amount of uh, your team leaders is having the right uh, skills, the right information, the right knowledge in order to succeed in their uh, goals and to make sure that their members will have uh, achievement. Following uh, with uh, percentage of team standards implementation, here again we're taking it from uh, engagement survey and through calibration meetings with team leaders. So uh, mostly from uh, calibration meetings we can get the team leader side uh, actually what is happening in terms of uh, uh, delivering team standards and at the same time quality of team standards delivering through discussions with the team leaders. But from engagement survey, we can see it vice versa, like what is the perspective of the members of the organization about the team standards delivery. And there you can have some correlations about what you are getting from engagement survey from members and what you are getting from team leaders meeting from team leaders in order to see uh, what is missing and which are the gaps that you are facing there. Uh, fourth thing, it's a percentage of members attending on conferences. Um, for this, you can have uh, a separate tab in your uh, HR uh, tool in order to track the conference attendees and to see from which departments are coming. Because uh, maybe you have a high members, uh, high attendance uh, in the conference, but most of them they are coming, for example, for, from IGB and OGB is not attending. So what kind of insights can this uh, thing give us? Maybe something is happening or it's not happening in OGB department and we need to focus there in order to bring more people in the conference and fix the situation. Then for sure PDP implementation, again, from engagement survey and through calibration meeting with team leaders, we can understand if PDP is being implemented because uh, without it, we cannot say that we are having members achieving their goals. Because if you don't have PDP implementation, but at the same time you have members achieving their goals, so what exactly these people are achieving if they don't have a plan there? And final, members with full education. Again, as we said about team leaders capacity building, from your educational plan, how many people they have fulfilled the topics and successfully fulfilled the topics, because you can have some... Um, uh, quizzes educationally in order to ensure that the people are getting the right knowledge and not that uh, just that they are uh, uh, fulfilling uh, the topics. Going to third process which is KEEP, uh, for sure we need to ensure pipeline in the organization and that's why we're tracking the percentage of applicants for next position. So uh, in order for us not to wait till we will open the applications for team leaders or VPs or whatever that we're running inside the LC and to approximately be aware from before what is happening, we need to ensure 
from uh, PDP and through the discussion with the team leaders that uh, uh, every team leader knows exactly which are the next steps of uh, each of uh, his members. So in the meetings with the team leaders, we can get this information and approximately predict how many people we will have as applicants for uh, our succession planning as well, which is uh, also important phase for the next recruitment that is coming. Uh, new members uh, uh, NPS, uh, no, it's members NPS here uh, from engagement survey to ensure that every member uh, is uh, having satisfaction from the time that they are investing in NYSEC. And uh, at the same time, uh, membership engagement, again from uh, engagement survey, there are several questions connected to the vision and the, I and the ISEC values uh, in order to ensure that uh, these people are connecting with the purpose of the organization and they are not just uh, here, just to exist. And finally, members retention rate, uh, which is uh, uh, for members that they are more than six months in the organization in order to separate, understand, uh, what is happening for, with uh, the old members, uh, counting also team leaders, and what is happening with the new members as well, uh, and uh, they are staying or they are not staying in the organization. And last but not least, uh, as we're talking for report, for Sir Report itself, it has it has its own uh, KPIs, so uh, ensuring national engagement survey responses and ensuring responses in SONA, uh, so you can understand that if this thing is low, especially about the engagement survey, then all the data that we have collected in the previous three processes about uh, from a national engagement survey are not relevant for us to have, to have a right outcome. So we cannot capitalize on them to proceed on an action plan. And as a result, most probably the action plan that uh, we will have, it might be wrong resulting in a more frustrated situation inside the LC about our HR. Uh, so, I must uh, do things uh, for uh, a routine uh, creation. We need to ensure that uh, we are tracking uh, uh, the right numbers in, the, in, in our TM processes and here you can find some extra TM KPIs that you can track in order to understand what actually is uh, happening, for example, with change per members based on the uh, customer flow or uh, uh, IXP for approvals and realizations and the quality of team standards uh, through the calibration meeting as well, in order for us to understand if, uh, if these things are connected somehow and uh, if we can use them in order to produce even better action plan. And uh, as we said, we need to establish a specific reporting routine that we will ensure that every stakeholder is getting the right uh, understanding of what's happening in the LC regarding the HR. Because, for example, the MC will be the one that will give us the strategic direction and uh, that we need to follow in order to ensure plan achievement, while at the same time, uh, our call CVPs are those that they are managing directly the HR in the LC. So together we need to have understanding of what is happening and which is the best people decision. Uh, so again, one more, one more time. Uh, we need to ensure that all these things, uh, all these reporting stuff will be accessible both to the AB, to the local and the national plenary. And uh, in a minimum of quarter basis, some of them, they are really important and they need more monthly approach. Uh, while others might need even weekly approach, having in mind members achieving their goals, if the people are achieving constantly their goals, or if it's uh, just a process of one week or something. Uh, and for sure, to ensure that uh, this knowledge will remain in the organization, will remain in the LC, to ensure uh, that uh, the, our successors, uh, will have the right uh, information, the right data to take uh, their decisions and to plan for themselves and for the LC for the next years. And uh, don't forget that uh, each layer in the organization always have uh, has a different role in what we are doing. So HR role is mainly to create and provide the, all the templates and all the materials in order for us to be able to gather the information for uh, the members and uh, to have uh, uh, actionable uh, reports based on our HR 
Uh, MC's role is uh, to gather the information from local and national level and to report uh, in a more organized uh, way to AI in order to have a global direction about how we manage people. And uh, Elsie's role is to maintain and collect all this data uh, and report to local plenary and to MC. Don't forget that uh, members are always uh, our customers as well, because a customer is someone that uh, is getting value from something. And uh, if we want to ensure that we're giving value to our members uh, through their experience, we need to have the right data, the right information, the right action plan that will help them have the best experience in their ISIC journey. Uh, summing up, uh, again, these are the three main uh, tools that we are using. Uh, it's not limited to them, engagement survey, HR control, and so on. Uh, we can have uh, even more, but these are the minimums that we need to use in order to ensure that we are having everything related to people's decision in uh, the same place. And uh, last but not uh, least, a sum up of everything. Like uh, both HR control and SONA are something that it needs to be a routine of our working uh, process. And uh, it's something uh, as a template that it is, it is being provided by EMC to the ELSIS in order for the ELSIS to implement them and not uh, uh, to have a separate direction. So in that way, we can ensure that we're collecting the same data uh, for uh, it's LC and we're having a more collective approach on what it needs to happen to our HR from national perspective. So uh, thank you for your time uh, for this uh, uh, small video. I hope it was useful. Here you can find the quiz uh, that uh, by the implementation of it and uh, if you are succeed on it, uh, you can ensure that you have understand uh, completely what is happening with uh, the, data, the data collection and what needs to happen from now on in your LC in order to have better uh, decision making for your people. So thank you again and good luck.